In this video, I'll be showing you the derivation for the length contraction formula in special relatively. In special relativity, sorry. So, um, in the previous video, um, I've shown a derivation of our time dilation formula. So, recall we have this formula here. Um, T is equal to TO divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So, this is our formula for um, time dilation. So we've established um, what this means using the Pythagorean theorem, and um, uh, what happens if you're if a of if a rocket's moving through space um, at a certain velocity, and you shine a light, and it goes up and down from an observer over here and an observer on the ship. So we've discovered um, why this works and why this is true, and why time is not absolute if um, the speed of light is absolute. But there's another particular thing that was discovered with um, this as well. So I'm just going to move this over to the side and we'll just keep that in the back of our mind. So I want you to consider um, a scenario. You have, um, let's say, Earth and you have a star over here, okay? And you have a rocket here and this rocket is traveling to this star here at some velocity, okay? And there's a person on Earth and there's a person on the rocket, okay? Um, using our time dilation stuff, we know that um, if um, this observer here, since he is not moving, he will be measuring um, T, and this observer here will be measuring TO. So from this person's perspective, he's going to see a distance um, from the Earth to the star as some distance, let's say, uh, LO, okay? Um, will this person see the same length here? Okay. So this is from um, this scenario I've drawn here right now with all the label stuff is from this person's perspective. But I want to see, I, I want to show you what um, the person on the rocket would be seeing. Okay. So let's draw the exact same scenario again. We have the person here on Earth. And we have this distance to the star, okay? And we have the rocket here, right? From the person's perspective on the rocket here, um, from this person's perspective, he is stationary, and actually the planets are moving this way at the velocity, okay? You could argue that, because um, from... From his perspective, he could argue that the rocket is staying still and that the Earth and the star, um, the Earth is moving away from him and the star is moving towards him. Um, from this fellow's perspective, he can see that the rocket is moving from the Earth to the star, but it's all, it's all relative, okay? And we also established that no matter um, what time each person sees um, in relativity, the one thing that remains the same is velocity, okay? So, for now, I'm just going to say, um, so we know that velocity is um, distance over time, right? So, let's, um, all right, let's go back to this person's perspective, and he has a velocity here. So, velocity, from his perspective, would be um, LO over T, okay? Now, velocity has to be constant. Um, so, this person, um, well, not this person here. This person here will be seeing the same velocity vector here and here, okay? So, um, but his time is different. So, he's going to have, instead of having T, he's going to have TO. So, therefore, in order for them to see the same velocity, they have to see different lengths. So, I'm going to label this as L, okay? This length that old mate sees here is not the same length as this length here that old mate sees here, okay? This is because velocity has to be constant. And for that to be true, since um, this person here is seeing a different time to this person here, their lengths need to be different in order for the velocities to be the same. Okay? So, I'm just going to write out um, an expression. This, this guy will say the velocity of the planet will be um, L divided by TO. Okay? Cool. Um... And that's all we need pretty much from this scenario. So we have two expressions for velocity here. So I'm just going to move. 
I'm going to move this one over here with the other one. And we can make this statement here. We can say LO divided by T is equal to L over TO. Alright? I'm going to rub the rest of this out because that's... We don't need this anymore. If you want to um, scroll back in the video and rewatch this scenario again, uh, feel free to do so. But I'm just going to rub all this out because we don't need this anymore, right? So, we have two arbitrary lengths and two arbitrary times. Um, I'll just rub all this out because we're going to need some room for our maths now. So, all we got to do now is to, do, to establish this formula. It's pretty much we're going to plug in our time dilation formula into, we're going to plug this into here. Okay? But we're not going to do that just yet. We're just going to rearrange our formula here. So, um, with this expression here, I'm going to move the TO up here. So, I'm going to multiply both sides by TO. So, that cancels and that moves up there. Okay? So, making that a bit um, easier to see. Uh, we're left with L is equal to um, LO multiplied by TO over T, okay? We know that um, T is equal to this, okay? So we're going to plug that in, okay? So we're going to have L is equal to LO multiplied by TO divided by TO, that's divided by um, 1 minus divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, okay? Um, this is a fraction of a fraction, so we have to, f this, um, this whole thing is the same as writing as, um, same as writing as to multiplied by square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared divided by to, so that will cancel, so we're left with, um, l is equal to lo, l subscript o, multiply by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that is our formula for length contraction. Okay? There's a second formula of special relativity. Now, what does this formula mean? What does each of them mean? So, I'm going to explain that to you um, really briefly. And in the next video, we'll go over some problems on length, length contraction. So, Recall with the time dilation formula that um, T is always greater than TO. With this formula here, LO is always greater than L. Okay, that's just a fact. So, um, LO is proper length. It is the length measured by someone who is at rest. So, if you have um, someone standing... Uh, If you have someone um, standing still, and he measures um, a length to him, uh, it won't appear to be um, dilated, it will be the proper length that he sees. Um, so LO is measured with someone when someone is not moving, when someone's at rest. L is the length, is dilated length. L is the length measured by someone who's observing someone move. So it'd be, let's say someone is here and another person is moving at some velocity here and he was to measure the distance between here. That would be length L because he's observing something move. So he'd see a, a contracted length. But from his perspective, from this person's perspective here, he'll see LO. Okay? All right. So that's basically what that means. Um, of course, V is velocity, and C is the speed of light, otherwise known as 3.0 times 10 to the um, 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, I hopefully um, you understand where this formula comes from now. Um, I'll be doing another video on problems involving length contraction. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you understand a bit of this, uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, leave some in the comments. Thank you for watching.